So the basics of it is it's an FHA loan, right? So FHA insured loans are, um, you know, in many cases, people, um, people that get an FHA loan are typically anyone that put down less than 20% when they buy a house, right? So, uh, you know, 203k loan is a specific FHA loan where you're able to wrap the rehab cost um, of buying a property into the loan. So take it another step. It allows you to buy houses that are in bad shape, foreclosure properties, distressed properties, okay. properties that in, that people that are looking to get into investing or looking to make a good financial decision, you buy some you buy some property with some meat on the bone. The 203k loan allows you to do that. And um, so the qualifications for it are just like an FHA, which is it needs a minimum of it the the score, the credit score is very the least of their of your worries on this, but the credit score somewhere is around like I've heard as low as 580, I've heard as high as 620. Um, but I would I would advise you being over some over 600 at least. Um, you need a debt to income ratio of about 50%. Uh, which basically means that your um, your loans and like your student loans, car payments, uh, revolving loans like that uh, can only be 50 percent of your gross income before taxes. Uh, you need you need your down payment, which would be three point five percent of the total of the purchase price of the house plus the forecasted rehab expense. So, for example, if you buy a house for one hundred thousand you know, from the seller, plus it needs 50,000 of work, you would need to put 3.5% down minimum of that $150,000 loan. All right. Okay. Where does the estimated rehab cost come from? Is that who's estimating that? Cool. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is where it gets, um, this is where you have to really know what you're doing and, and where, uh, where it gets, um, a little more complicated in the sense that when you go out and you look for houses, right? And you look for houses that need work. When you do your estimates, there's a couple different things that you can do. Number one, and what I would advise now, something I didn't do, but now talking to a lot of really experienced 203k consultants is that you should hire a 203k consultant who is basically an inspector that is certified through the FHA. Okay. And what their job is to do is their job is to do a feasibility study on houses when you are looking to buy it. Basically saying they go in, they review the house, they give you a cost estimate about of what the work is going to be to get the house up to snuff for the bank to approve the loan. Then anything additionally on top of that would be anything like cosmetic that you want on top of it, right? So they give you a feasibility study basically okay. saying, hey, you need – X amount of dollars just to get this thing in a livable condition if it's not in a livable condition already, right? The second thing is like something that you really desire like on your really important list. And then your last is like your like would like type of things. But a 203k consultant is going to be your best bet on it. Now that isn't to say if you have a friend that's a contractor or something like that when you're going around looking and searching for properties that you can bring this 203k consultant in. Until you're in contract with a property, the 203K consultant will just be working independently for you. Um, and then once they once you go into contract, then they're working as part of the loan. They get fees uh, based on, you know, uh, the way that the loan closes, uh, the size of the loan, stuff like that. But basically, the way to figure that out is working with the 203K consultant, which is very easy to find. You just look, you just Google 203K consultants. Okay. Uh, they, you can go on the HUD website. It's going to give you a, uh, a directory and you just look up your state. Um, I would only look by state, not by town, because it's only going to give the town where they reside. So go by state, look for the closest uh, towns to your uh, area where you're looking to buy and their phone number's right there. Call them up, say, hey, listen, I'm looking to do a 203K loan in your area. Are you willing to come check out a couple of properties with me and they'd be more than happy to obviously for a fee a couple hundred bucks every time they go out or maybe you could work something out with them that, that's great advice that's great advice because i also did cool. a two or three k loan and no one really knows anything about it specifically nope. if you just walk into the <laughs> local bank uh and so i had a lot of the problems that you had i had no idea what was going on i had to figure it out myself so with that consultant great information is that the best way to pick contractors is taking their advice yeah, so uh, a couple things uh, go into this with picking contractors. So I would say even to dial it back, I think we skipped ahead a step, 
before anything, you want to make sure that you're finding the right lenders um, and a lender that is super experienced with doing 203Ks, right? They're, they are out there. Word of advice to anyone listening to this is writing loans puts dinner on these loan officers' tables, right? So at the end of the day, they're doing anything for leads. They're doing anything to make a deal. They will tell you they know how to do it, okay? And that's what I experienced. He's like, oh, this is easy. No problem. Our office does it. Yep. Come to, come to realization when it took four months to close. Yep. That no one in the office had any idea what they were doing. Um, it was, it was very, I almost lost, I almost lost the deal on two occasions and it literally came down to the loan officer going and pleading with the guy because he happened to be a family friend of mine. Um, and, uh, he went through it. But the first step of this is to find an experienced 203k lender. First thing you do when you're looking for these lenders, um, is just ask them how many they've done and ask them for references. Honestly, you want to be, you want to be stringent with this. You, you don't trust me mm -hmm. <laughs> again, take it from me who had a panic attack over this thing <laughs> because of working with the wrong lender. I've now met a couple great lenders that do these day in, day out. I I've met, uh, you know, I have one guy, um, that works out of New Jersey. He's closing them in 30 days, uh, which is insane. And, and it really comes down to that lender first and foremost, but to go back to the contractors. So yeah, I mean, you have a couple different options with picking contractors. I would say the most important thing before you even start looking at contractors is get that 203 K consultant in there because that 203 K consultant is going to give you a couple things. They're going to give you a line item by line item scope of work. Okay, so there's going to be no lost in translation uh, communication issues between what needs to be done on the property. Every line item is going to tell you and exactly what needs to be done and specifics. It'll say, um, you know, retile bathroom, you know, 100 square feet of X tile. And then next to that line item will be labor and it'll be material. And now it's going to go all the way through the list of whatever it is, flooring, walls, moving walls, um, repairs, electrical, all that stuff. The more specific, the better. That 203K consultant is going to write that up. They're going to give you a feasibility and a cost study. So now you're going to have numbers. You're already going to know like ballpark what's this going to be. Now what you can do is you can take that, you can take that scope of work kind of what they'll do is they'll send it back to you. You can either white out the numbers or they should be able to send it back to you with blank numbers. And now you have a worksheet. So now any contractors you have obviously always start with personal, personal references, right? Go to your friends and family. If they had a good, if they had a good, uh, a good contractor that they really liked, bring them on, bring them on to do it. Sometimes the lender will have a list. Sometimes the 203k consultant will have some people, um, and then when all else fails, man, just go on home advisor, Angie's list, one of those things, but it makes it very easy. Bring all the contractors in one day, hand them all this scope of work, takes all the guesswork out of it. Tell them, fill out the blanks. Tell me what it's going to be. Tell me what it's going to be in labor from you, what it's going to be in material from you and hand it back to me. You're going to get leveled bids, making sure everyone's on the same page and you'll make sure that you're finding the best contractor that way. That's awesome, man. Great information. Great information. One, one of the things you and I get asked a lot is with the 203k loan, does it require me to be my primary residence? Yes. So the, with any FHA loan, uh, the reason you're getting this um, opportunity to only put 3.5% down, still get a decent, um, you know, uh, still get a decent interest rate is because the whole point of this loan, the reason it came out was to boost the economy, right? It's to boost home ownership. Home ownership is always going to be good for the economy. And then the 203K was another level of that. And it was like not only to boost the economy, boost home ownership, but also to uh, get some of these crappy houses off the market, right? You know, you have a lot of people that maybe they want to move into an area, um, but then, you know, they're missing all these opportunities of houses that, you know, like in my example, it was literally a crack house. Like it was literally like they were selling drugs out of the front of it. It was a disaster. It was really bad. And, um, you know, the town was actually super happy, like made permitting very easy. That's another thing to consider, guys. Like, you have you you're taking when you go to the town they are ecstatic to see that you're taking a really junky house that might be and taking it and making it really nice it's just gonna it's gonna it's gonna help the community overall so for sure and the, a lot of a lot of people don't know that right 
Oh, yeah. And, and that's, you know, it's helping everybody. It's helping your neighbors. It's helping the town. It's helping the community. So a lot of good goes into this. Um, so that being said, you know, investors always get the short end of the stick because they are doing it strictly for profit, whereas someone that's going into this is a first time home buyer or something like that, or they're looking to move into a house, make it their own. That's why they do this loan. Now, that being said, um, you know, I look at it like this. It's not for everybody. In my, in, my, in my position, I was willing to make the sacrifice, live in the house. I didn't have to, I wasn't married to an area, wasn't married to a community. The way I looked for it is like, listen, I'll live in it for as long as I need to, if I need to. And then when I'm ready to move out, you know, I have, I'm going to have a property that's going to be a two family and it's going to cash flow pretty healthily, which it Absolutely. now is doing. I no longer Absolutely. live there. And, um, you know, it's, it's been doing great so far. So, uh, the, the FHA, uh, the rule is you need to be there at least for a year. You have to say you're, you're going in there with the intention of living there for a year. Um, after that, you're kind of out of it and, you know, things happen, life happens, you know what I mean?